Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, today we're going to talk about diet and cataracts. The eye sees by collecting and focusing light on the retina and vision is predicated on the lens of the eye remaining clear. A cataract is a clouding of the lens which causes blurred vision and, can, and glare and cannot be corrected by just wearing contact lenses or glasses. The condition can result in loss of vision, in, if not treated, and about 48% of all blindness worldwide is due to cataracts. In the United States, about 24.4 million Americans over the age of 40 have cataracts, and by the age of 75, almost half of Americans can expect to develop them. So I think it's fair to take a look at the risk factors for cataracts and try to prevent them if possible. So studies show that a lot of different factors, including aging, have a significant effect on the risk of cataracts. The risk tends to increase with age because the proteins that make up the lens of the eye have very minimal turnover, which decreases even more over time. So what ends up happening is these aged proteins then start to clump together, the lenses become less flexible, thicker, and cloudy as a result. But there are many, many other contributing factors, including several diet and lifestyle habits, and so aging is a factor, but when you think about it, I think humans are designed for all of their body parts to last as long as they do, generally speaking. So let's look at some of these other factors. Oxidative damage to the lens is a risk factor, and one important contributor to this can be smoking. Data from the Swedish mammography cohort show that smoking increased the risk of cataracts in a dose-dependent manner. The more cigarettes a person smokes, the more likely they are to develop cataracts. On the other hand, smoking cessation lowered the risk, and 20 years after not smoking anymore, the risk was not statistically higher for former smokers than for never smokers. Alcohol is a risk factor with increasing risk accompanying increased um, intake. And so again, you see that dose-dependent relationship that really tells you that there's a cause and effect relationship. Dehydration can be a major contributor to cataract formation and other conditions of the eyes as well. Several studies have shown that diet and health status, health status also, impacts both eye health and the risk of cataract development. A study including almost 1,400 subjects concluded that dietary intake of nutrients like riboflavin, vitamin C and E, beta carotene, niacin, thiamine, and iron decreased the risk. The same study showed that having diabetes increased the risk, um, as did taking oral steroids, smoking, higher BMI, and taking medications for gout. Another study showed that the severity of diabetes, as defined by higher doses of medication or becoming insulin dependent, also increased the risk even more. Another risk factor is atopy, and cataracts are more likely to form and progress during periods when atopic dermatitis is more severe or is going through an exacerbation. Other medications, in addition to gout medications, that tend to increase the risk include tranquilizers, methotrexate, oral contraceptives, Accutane, epinephrine, uh, sorolin, SSRIs, prescribed for depression, neuroleptic drugs, potassium sparing diuretics, several antibiotics, and statin drugs. Taking steroids is the fourth leading cause of secondary cataracts. So, medications can actually increase the risk. And already you probably have seen several risk factors that most people are practicing all the time. We're all getting older, so that's a risk factor. A lot of people are dehydrated, drink too much alcohol, eat a crappy diet, have a high BMI, have one of the illnesses that I've listed, and have these medications are routinely prescribed. Higher dietary intake of the carotenoids, lutein, and zeaxanthin can decrease the risk. One study showed that subjects with the highest dietary intake of these nutrients had a 22% lower risk of developing cataracts than those with the lowest intake. Green leafy vegetables, along with all other green and yellow vegetables, are concentrated sources of these nutrients. Fat intake is a risk factor. Data from the EPIC study in Europe showed that the risk of all types of cataracts increased with higher plasma levels of saturated fat and cholesterol. A lot of that comes, saturated fat and cholesterol, comes from animal foods. Um, this study also showed that vegetarians and vegans had lower risk of cataracts than meat eaters, and the less meat consumed, the lower the risk. Again, that dose-dependent relationship we love to see. In another study that involved examining dietary pattern, a research group looked at adherence to the dietary guidelines for Americans and cataract risk. The researchers reported that diets that were more in compliance with the guidelines, including eat more, eating more fruit, vegetables, and whole grains, the people who had higher adherence had significantly lower risk of cataracts than those who were not in compliance. 
Furthermore, and I thought this was very interesting, the association was stronger for those who did not take dietary supplements. The government's dietary guidelines, as you have heard me speak about often, are notoriously inadequate, but I guess better than the eating patterns of most people, and one of the messages I think we should get from this study is all dietary improvement is meaningful. We should get people on that path. A presentation made at the annual meeting of the Association for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology recently reported that there are differences in the gut bacteria of people who eat a healthier and more antioxidant-rich diet compared to those who did not eat a healthy diet. The study included 757 white female twins from the Twins UK cohort, and subjects were an average age of 62. The study involved food frequency questionnaires, eye exams, and stool samples. The study identified a relationship between healthier dietary patterns and healthier gut microbiomes. That's uh, not, not new information for those of you who listen to me uh, regularly. And then a relationship between healthier gut microbiomes and less cataract formation. Lead author Ekaterina Yanova said, quote, Better understanding of the relationship between the gut microbiome and cataract may lead to new targeted nutritional interventions or even to the development of probiotic drugs to reduce the risk of cataract later in life. Now, I did some research and I couldn't find any studies showing a direct link between taking probiotic supplements and reduced risk of cataract, but there are thousands of studies showing that taking probiotics is better, improves markers of health and long-term health outcomes with minimal risk. So good reasons for many, if not most people, to take probiotics and one of the not as yet proven benefits may be reduced risk of cataract formation. Surgery is the usual method for addressing cataracts. Unfortunately, it's a relatively low risk procedure. It's performed millions of times every year in the United States and a good surgeon will do this at a relatively low risk to the patient. The better option, however, is prevention. The way to do that is adopting an optimal plant-based diet, low in fat, drinking lots of filtered water, staying lean, not smoking, using alcohol as an occasional treat, if at all, avoiding prescription drugs whenever possible, and addressing the cause of any current health conditions. These are all good strategies for reducing the risk of cataracts. Unfortunately, it appears to be a relatively preventable condition. So that is all for today and all for the week. Uh, remember, there will be no broadcast on Tuesday next week, but you will hear from me again on Thursday. Have a wonderful holiday, and I'll give you the usual recommendation I give before every holiday. Do not eat anything that you don't think I would eat, okay? Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next week.